Hi guys and gals, it's Lethal Lynn here at my shooting range and today I'm working on some combat shooting skills. I always maintain that you practice shooting very small targets because under the stress of combat your group is going to enlarge by three times. I think it's a really good idea to stand close, draw, and shoot that like that. Wasn't my best shot ever, it just hit the top of it, but I hit it. You want the ability to draw at close range, hit a small target. Let's get some more, see if I can't do a better job. You're casual and you have to shoot quickly. My friend Mark Sullivan says, the real test of a professional hunter is not how well he can shoot at 300 yards or even 30 yards it's how well he can shoot at 30 feet when that buffalo that lion that leopard is coming at you like a streak of light with mayhem in its heart ready to rend you into pieces can he hold his mud and shoot straight under all that pressure what can he do at 30 feet it's the same thing in a gunfight what can you do under all that pressure? Unfortunately, this extreme range is where gunfights quite often occur. They say 90% within seven to 10 yards, but a huge majority are like five feet away. Now there, I took just a smidgen more time to aim. It was fast, but not my anywhere near as fast as I can go. But try to be casual, turn your back to it, Turn around and shoot. Now, that's how you save your life when you're hunting and a leopard jumps out of the bushes. And I'm a huge advocate sometimes of doing follow-ups on certain big game animals with a revolver or a super powerful automatic, like maybe a 10 millimeter, simply because they're so fast into action and the multiple shots you can get. Not, <laughs> not against Cape Buffalo. You do that when you have no other choice like I do with the spear hunting. Um, sometimes I have no other choice but to use the most powerful revolver I have and it's still very iffy on a 2,000 pound buffalo which I demonstrated again this summer. I shot up a big Cape Buffalo probably 12-14 times through the through the lungs and it didn't put him down. He just took it with a 44 Magnum and I had to actually finish him with my 500 Nitro. Now, yes, I was shooting him at some distance. I wasn't shooting him up close. If I'd been this close, I, of course, would have brained him and killed him. If you're going to live a life of adventure, if you're going to put yourself in harm's way and try to get as much as you can out of life and go and do stuff that no one else wants to do or has the courage to do, it behooves you to be able to hit an egg like that. Let's put another one up. In knife fighting, the way I teach it is we never take one step away from danger if we can help it. We always want to take two steps. If I take one step when I have my knife and I move this far, that guy can still cut me. But if I take two steps, I'm in a position where he can't. It's the same thing. There's lots of rocks and stuff I'm rolling around down here on the ground. So it's not the best footing in the whole world. But you can also practice changing your position quickly and shooting that egg draw when I'm moving like that and blast it to smithereens you don't have to stay here and receive his gunfire you could step step pivot and shoot you can push push and shoot you can cross step pivot and shoot what I'm trying to say is you need to practice not receiving fire Yes, sometimes your feet will feel like they're rooted in concrete and you can't move for whatever reason and you have to fire from there. But you need to be able to move 
to either side and hit small targets up close. Now I'm going to my left and blast him. I slowed down just a tiny bit to make that hit. But as you move, start your draw, pull it up. When you find your second foot, you should be pulling the trigger. So I'm drawing and I'm firing. And it should be like a second or very close. But you've moved your direction. One, two. Now I'm at least one and a half steps, not in front of him, but now I'm maybe six feet away, five and a half feet away, and I made him turn. The first time I might do that. There, I mostly point shot. I just saw a flash picture of the front sight. And I won't say I got lucky because I practiced this, but it turned out good for me. It might turn out good for you, but you may have to bang, bang as you go past just because you want to rock him. He's already starting to draw a bead on you. You might want to have to get out of the way right away and disrupt him, break his mindset, break his spirit, break his walk, break his mane, his soul strength by putting one at him or in him. May not be your ideal shot, but this takes time to do. So sometimes you might not have enough time to take even more than one step before you have to let go. It'll all help you. Anytime you can move offline and not be right directly in front of them, and make it slightly harder for them, it's a good thing for you.